let's let's bring some of your observations, which are very well, profound, into Boston. Okay, now we what we're, see what we're all concerned about right now. Are we going to be able to save our nation? Mm -hmm. Are we? That's the are, deep concern. Are, are we really in such declension that God's going to have to literally pour out His wrath on us and stop this abounding wickedness that's uh, occurring? Um, well, again, Wesley's, out of his 44 sermons that he gave to his circuit riders and sent them out and they memorized them and they changed the whole world, um, uh, 17 of them are on the Sermon on the Mount. Now, in the Sermon on the Mount, you've got to deal with a pretty hard text. It says, Be ye therefore perfect, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Well, if you ask people the question, do you believe you can be perfect, and there's very few hands go up. But if you begin to go through the scriptures carefully, there's, there's actually a whole page of references on perfection in the Bible. But if, I've taken the, basically the revelation was given to George Fox in the 1600s on this, with the scriptural arguments that Wesley got during the 1700s, which are amazing and, and were woven into all those 44 sermons and more writings of his, uh, and then Charles Finney who found that his converts were all backsliding. And he was having struggles, but you know, then he got to the, where his, he was getting 80% faithfulness in his converts, whereas Billy, Billy Graham's admitted that he gets He would less, be very happy with 80%. <laughs> yeah, he's it's been less than 8% because we've not moved on into the holiness. Now, what's going to motivate us and get a surgeon about this is to realize that Jesus was saying in the Sermon on the Mount, basically, you'll be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Who? Who's going to be the salt of the, world, the light of the world? Well, he, had, he gave the Beatitudes right before that. Mm -hmm. What are the Beatitudes? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the, the meek. Blessed are the, uh, those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Well, these are all holiness attitudes. And, um, and then after that, he says, you're the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Are we salt? Are we saving society? Well, let me stop you here for a moment and add an element of complexity to our conversation. I thoroughly believe what you're saying. But here's the How perspective of a pastor. Yeah. I've, my church is located, as I stand here, as I sit here right now, I can look almost literally across into the Boston's South End, one of the most um, militant uh, homosexual communities in America. Mm -hmm. most, uh, one of the most uh, politically connected, influential, rich, intellectually uh, developed communities in America, homosexual communities in America. And um, uh, if the Lord were all of a sudden to start moving upon that community with all its bondage, and uh, it's utter, utter corruption and sinfulness and come streaming into our churches, uh, pastors would have a very big problem in their hands. It would be a great blessing, of course, but also a big challenge. Um, and, uh, you know, even if the Lord were to move that way, um, because uh, there would have to be a very lengthy process of... Uh, transformation and change in these people who are so deeply entrenched in their sinful practices and bondage. And so I think as a pastor, I often deal in my congregation right now, for example, which is mainly Latino, but we bring a lot of people in who are first generation believers and they come from a background of uh, alcoholism, uh, womanizing, incest, um, violence, uh, uh, abuse, and so on and so forth. And these people come in streaming huge sensuality. sensuality and I have found that it takes a good while for these people to really get it, despite all my supplications and my preaching and <laughs> uh, you know the, the experiences of the Holy Spirit and the w powerful worship that I think we have and so on and so forth. So that, you know, uh, somehow I think the church has to find uh, a, a balance between, on the one hand, preaching that message of sanctity and holiness and, you know, uh, absolute coming, drawing closer to God's character, but at the same time allow space so that we don't um, uh, present put things in such a way that people say, no, I, I can't go there. We'll and, put burdens know, I, on people yeah, too I, heavy to carry. Yeah, because they, they say it's impossible. Where I am now, I can't get there. 
So, you know, on the one hand, I think we need to, without watering the gospel, how do we keep that understanding okay. and at the same time well, open the door for those individuals to come in and to say, okay, you know, there is space here for me to enter into that journey. Amen. I, and I can appreciate that, but also we have to get our, our, our final, you know, mm -hmm. It, it's managed by objectives. Mm -hmm, we have mm -hmm. to get our objective exactly. right, then figure out exactly. how we get there. How do we get there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and we, <clears throat> you've got to have a firm goal. Uh, you, you have to have a high gospel. You yeah, have to preach well, that high gospel. You know, it, it says, uh, of speaking of the Old Testament, it says before before uh, before John, uh, it said the law was preached. And and uh, and uh, but since John the kingdom is preached and men press into it, and uh, and of course everybody's afraid of preaching the law and and people not having the grace to to live by it. But if we keep preach the kingdom correctly, mm -hmm. what will happen? Men will press into it, mm -hmm. but they're not seeing the kingdom. Exactly. We we have abandoned yeah. presenting to them that lofty goal that we need to pursue that we need to strive toward. And that's, that's my own understanding as I preach to my people what I hope is a high understanding of, of uh, holiness and, you know, our call to sanctification. Um, and somehow I find myself as a pastor knowing the struggles that they go through but now another at the same time uh, preaching, you know, about that grace of God that is ever flowing uh, without uh, hopefully diluting their need, you know, to pursue that holiness. But also telling them, hey, you can come and confess okay. your sin. You can come and... Uh, Find that now, grace. My, 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 problem uh, isn't, my problem isn't the homosexual and his sin. My problem is my sin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, what we, and, and here's what we're saying basically is we can, we've, we've had a teaching is that this is an impossible teaching mm -hmm. that we really can't become like Christ. Mm -hmm. We can't be perfected in love and walk in his perfect will which is very clearly, you know, Epaphras prayed that they would walk in the perfect will of God. They know all the will of God. And, and then, of course, uh, Jesus and, and Paul talks about the love of God being shed abroad in their hearts and, and being made perfect in love and then becoming united in, perfectly together. And, and, of course, is it attainable? Well, Finney put it this way. He says that most of our doctrine is really self-justification instead of God justification. We're not mm -hmm. justifying what God could do for us. We're trying to justify what we can't do. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so we say, now the homosexuals are coming to us and saying, well, I go to church. I take communion. Mm -hmm. In fact, we... And we they, feel that that's they, enough. The, that's... the bishop, the, the priest comes down and kisses them mm -hmm. at, uh, at, the, yeah. at the altar rail during the communion That is service. total heresy. Yeah. We, I, I and, and they're saying, well, look, at, you, you have your sins, and God forgives you. I have my sins, and God forgives me. But that is persistent, willful sin. Right. But the problem is, is uh... we're saying we can't be delivered from our sins. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, in a sense, how can we put this burden on them if we won't take, uh, correct ourselves with it? Indeed. Know? Let's take a break and uh, let's continue our conversation in a moment.